Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the new safe bar. We are jumping in again, trying to rebuild the streak and we are going to play as... Do, 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 do. We'll play as Azazel this time around. He's a pretty, pretty normal guy, pretty easy character, or at least hopefully a pretty easy character, but... We're going for completion marks, we're going to have to play some characters that aren't as exciting maybe. And honestly, to be fair, he does have some interesting synergy potential with certain stuff. Um, so it's not like all bad uh, with this guy. Like there, there is some potential to get some really cool stuff. Really should have destroyed those poops before I left because they can drop some good stuff. But what's done is done. Uh, but yeah, like get, 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 give me a Ludo. Give me a Ludo run as this guy. Give me a D4. <laughs> Okay, default's an interesting one. I don't often like doing re-rolling all the time, but if I get given D4 early on, I will re-roll all the goddamn time. So basically, unless we get an absolute god tier run, unless we get Ludo, <laughs> I'm going to be re-rolling a lot. Um, as for question of the day, as for question of the day, Let's let's talk about re-rolling. If you could re-roll your attributes in life in terms of like your social skills or like your hand-eye coordination or any of like what you'd consider your skills, which one would be the main one you'd want to re-roll? Which which skill would be your main one? For me, I think it'd be like my ability to um, like do DIY and things like that um, and like be sort of like crafty and able to sort of... I mean, I, I'm not saying I'm not able to learn those things, but like... Some people pick them up a lot quicker uh, than others, and I'm definitely one of the people that doesn't pick those things up very quickly. I'm very, very bad at doing anything, like, manual, really. Um, especially when it comes to, like, DIY around the house. Uh, my girlfriend does all of that stuff. I, I don't really do any of it. Um, I am very much um, opposing gender roles in terms of uh, my relationship, because I don't do any of the DIY, um, and I do all of the cooking and a decent amount of the cleaning, so... <laughs> Um, and then straight away, let's just re-roll that into some HP. Nice. Um, yeah, so... I, uh, I definitely go against that. But yeah, that'd definitely be my sort of big one. Um, I, I feel like that's probably a good one to, to sort of call out. Because it's something that's really useful. And like I said, it is, it is a skill you can easily learn. It's not something that I'm, like, incapable of learning. But... Um, just don't really have the time to, or, or really, to be honest, the need. I'm not doing crafty stuff enough for it to be required of me. Uh, it just, it just be one of those things that's kind of nice to have. Also, this room scares me a lot. I mean, it's kind of nice to have a room with, like, this much potential stuff. I'm hoping that I can, uh, use some of these bombs here to... Oh, you bastard. I tried to, uh, push one of the troll bombs into this so I could grab this card here. Um... And the bomb had a really, really short fuse, so it didn't work, because I lost a black heart. Three. Eh, it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, Celestial Crown's pretty fun, although I don't know how it works with this character. I don't know if it even does work with this character. But like I said, it doesn't matter. It's going to get re-rolled anyways. All right, let's keep moving on. Um... Speaking of, like, attributes and stuff, uh, I don't know why I decided to go around the long way there. Uh, speaking of attributes and stuff, one thing that I'm thinking of doing uh, next month is, uh, I don't know if any of you have heard of a game called Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, I've not really played or even heard of the other two, but I've been looking at number three, and it comes out uh, of Early Access on August 3rd. And basically what it sounds like is a turn-based RPG that is based around D&D 5th Edition. And I, I like D and D, but I've not really played it a lot. And I, I don't know how many of you are going to get it, or even if you know much about it. But if any of you are big fans of it, or you've played the early access, or if you're waiting to sort of get it, let me know what you think of me getting it. Because I'm still not 100% sort of set on the idea yet. Um, but I, I'm intrigued to say the least. I'm intrigued. Um, I really think it could be a, a fun game, uh, especially considering. At the moment, Diablo 4 has been a, a little bit of a, a letdown, um, in terms of Season 1 at least. I'm really hopeful, and in fact I'm more than hopeful, I'm actually pretty confident that in a few seasons time, Diablo uh, 4 will be an absolutely fantastic game. But until they figure things out, until they like change things and, and add more endgame content, it's in a rough spot. Because it's a game as a service, as, I, as I've said prior, uh, games as a service, just, where are we going here? Are we going light path? Uh, games as a service is just, it's just a bad model. They need to axe it. Basically, it means that games can be released as betas with not enough content, really. I wouldn't even say not enough. Diablo 4 did have quite a good bit of content, but 
end game wise, it really didn't. Um, and it's, yes, it's just kind of a shame to see. Um, Mustard Seed is pretty good. And I guess we'll grab Doorstop. Why not? Um, yeah, and so, like, while I'm sort of waiting on that game to get more updates and get to a position of, of being more enjoyable for me, I mean, Diablo 3 was exactly the same. I, Diablo 3, if you don't know, is one of my favorite games of all time. It's still to this day the game that I have the most hours played on, even higher than Isaac, which is probably astonishing to you guys. I have about 1,600 in Isaac and about 1,750 in Diablo 3. Oh, dude, that guy's hitbox was a bit whiffy then. Um... And the game, honestly, when it first came out, was kind of unplayable. There was so many problems with it, and by the time Reaper of Souls released, it was a really, really good game. So I'm hopeful for it, but yeah, until then, I'm looking at other games to play, and Baldur's Gate seems like it, it's a game that could really fill that niche for me. And I know it's nothing like Diablo, I've been told, uh, and I've read about it. it's not really a Diablo-style game, but it's that RPG niche. Um, and I think it could be a lot of fun, but I'm yeah, I'm curious... Uh, what you guys would think if any of you are getting it, but I'm also curious to hear, um, like, if I do get it, should I, like, one, one thing that I tend to do, just a little backstory before I get into the actual question here, what I tend to do with games, and it kind of pisses me off, but I honestly have tried so hard to stop and I can't, is, um, I tend to really over, like, over-research and over-consume content about a game I'm currently enjoying. Um, for example, when, um, like, Battlebit. I've been playing Battlebit a lot, uh, Battlebit Remastered, and currently I am on the Reddit, I'm watching all the YouTube videos, and I'm just consuming as much content of that game as well as playing it a lot as I can. And I seem to do that with every single game, and honestly, it's not ideal, because when I'm- Oh, dude, I thought we were gonna collide with each other, I didn't realize we were gonna pass through each other. Uh, when I do that, I tend to burn myself out on games quicker than I should. It happened with Diablo 4 as well. It happens with basically every game I play. And so, with this game, I, I want to maybe potentially take a an extra step to prevent me doing that uh, by just not researching. But, because of what I know about the game, range down is real bad right now. Um, because of what I know about the game, I know that, um, of course, it's a... Uh, like Dia uh, Diablo, it's a um, darkest dungeon. Darkest dungeon. Oh my god, I can't speak because it's a D and D style thing, and I don't know much about D and D. I'm curious to know if I should research about the game first and maybe sort of figure it out a little bit before I go in, or if I'll have a more enjoyable experience by just learning it on the fly and going in pretty much blind. I'm I'm sort of on the edge of yeah. I'm, I'm not really sure which one would be best. I don't really know. Right. Ugh. Really? This this is a really horrible boss with this character as well. Luckily, he's like pretty darn easy to kill, but just so much shit's going on on screen. Why do you have to shoot as well? You already leave a billion bullets behind. Calm yourself down. Oh god, this boss is actual nightmare fuel. Gross. Right, let's keep it going, keep it moving. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm kind of curious what people would think. Like, should I research it and, and learn a bit more before I go in to have a smoother experience? Or should I jump in and potentially have a bit of struggle, but potentially enjoy it more by not knowing much about it? I'm curious to see what people think, because I'm sure there's some differing opinions. And there might be the, the case that none of you care at all, and none of you are going to end up playing that game. But still, I still think it's worth putting out there, because, I don't know, we, we, we average around, like, 700 views on these videos around that. So, I feel like the opinion of potentially 700 people, at least one or two of you are probably going to be getting Baldur's Gate 3 and have some opinion on what I'm talking about. And if you do, like I said, I would be uh, very happy to hear it. Yeah, so far, our D4 rerolls have been very mundane and regular. I mean, that is partially to do with the fact that... Um, oh, we got Mum's knife for a little bit here. Um, partially to do with the fact that we um, we don't have many items yet. So we're not going to get anything crazy going on until we get a few more items locked in. But, eh, we'll see. We'll see. Do you know what I kind of wish there was? And I realise... Ooh, thingy heart. Uh, well, I kind of re realise there was. And I realise why there isn't, because it would be a bit strong. But a mod that makes it so that when you gain an item that has a on-pickup effect, it actually gave you that effect. Like, giving me the golden hearts from Golden Flakes here and stuff like that. I think that'd be quite nice. 
a Pikmin item here. Not Pikmin. Not Pikmin. What the hell am I talking about? Um, what the hell? Petscop. That's the one. Pikmin and Petscop are two very different things. Not even remotely related. Gimme, gimme. Probably should be looking to buy items realistically, because uh, more items to re-roll is better for us. Right. Crack this bad boy open a little bit. Devil. A lot of stuff. Might even be able to buy an item via what we get from this. Reroll again. Mended knife this time. Hey, there you go. You can buy an item now. Nine lives. Thank you. Doesn't take any health away from us, so it's worth taking. I know it's going to get re-rolled, so it's not really that great. But overall, it's good to grab because it's not going to take any life off us. And it's an item to re-roll. We've seen our item room as well. We're good to skedaddle, skadoodle here. Still at really low range, unfortunately, due to that range down pill. It's a bit of a shitter. Bit of a shitter. Okay, I'm probably going to get hit a good bit here. What the hell are you doing here? Have I seen this attack before? I don't think I've seen this attack before. You know, calm yourself down, my good sir. There you go. What the heck? There we go. We got the same item we got from our last boss. That's so funny. Um, Soul Bond. Unfortunately, it's an active, which I'm kind of peeved about. Chain yourself to a random enemy um, with an astral chain and freeze them. The chain deals heavy contact damage. Going too far will break the chain. Chained enemies have a 33% chance to drop soul hearts when killed. And chain bosses too for 5 seconds. It's nice, but I'm, I'm way more vibing with the D4 right now. Like, I, I think do, doing a, a full sort of re-roller run is fun. The only issue with a full re-roller run is realistically makes thumbnailing the episode a lot harder. <laughs> Because I, like, don't know which set of items to stick on sort of thing. Definitely need some more damage coming our way. Get out of the way ahead. Oh, we've got the sneeze as well, you can realise. Oh, that's kind of cool. That that's, that's a pretty cool idea for a room there. Oh, dude, hell yes. Shopkeepers and secret rooms are replaced by room clusters blowing them up. Ooh, that's kind of an interesting idea. I mean, I'm not going to take it, but... Do you know what? Let's blow you up. Um, really, really happy with the reflected thing. This thing is, uh, goddamn crazy in how good it is. We'll be taking a lot of damage to, due to things being more reflected, but especially, especially if items are reflected, that's literally double items in a lot of scenarios, so really, really good stuff. Good. But yeah, so we're looking out for reflected items wherever possible. Luckily, D4 is not like the D100. We do not re-roll our trinket. We get to keep that. By the way, if you can hear my fan in the background, I apologize. It's it's like, it's weird. It's, it's, it's really horrible weather at the moment, but it's kind of still quite sweaty. Quite humid, I guess, is the best, better word for, for it, other than just sweaty. Hmm. That is fun, but it's not reflected items. <gasps> Zealot heart. Okay, leave that there for now. Remember to come back to the sack room at the end of this floor because Zealot hearts are really good. Even if you only get one floor worth of use out of them, they're still pretty strong. And that's our first reflected item already. And it's a good one too because it's got an on pickup effect. That's nice stuff that is. There's another one. Corpse Flower. Spawns a Rotten Heart. Chance for Tears to inflict long-lasting weak poison effect. Poison enemies now periodically spawn a blue fly. Blue flies spawn this way. Cannot attack the entity that spawned them. I really like the idea of that. I'm at least going to try it out for a little bit here. See if it works with our setup. At least the Zealot has on the map as well. Less likely to forget it. Grab another item here. Sadly, two actives once again. Cannot escape the actives. Well, I definitely see blue flies 
spawning out of somewhere, so... Something good's going on. Oh, is that our rotten rotten hearts? It might be. So let's, let's go for a reroll. Got some good stuff. We got some really good stuff here, actually. And really good range as well. Okay, this might be a run we can stick with, actually. That was like some insane damage right there. Please, please, please don't lower my... Okay, it didn't lower my damage. It did lower my range by a good bit, which is a shame. Uh, but overall, that wasn't bad. I, I might... I honestly might stick with this setup. Um... This is a really, really good setup. We got some really good items here. Toxic shock, obviously, really good. Our damage is good. Uh, we got the the heart thing, the charm ability. Um, we've got molten slag. We've got good, good few damage ups. We've got tears ups. This is this is pretty good. I mean, I'm not gonna get rid of D4, of course, but I am certainly tempted with this. Right. Let's keep it moving. So yeah, with this Zealot Heart, we got um, B-Skin. So as you can see, when we fire, tears go out in all directions. That's kind of nice. The longer we can keep the Zealot Heart alive, the better for us. Yeah, honestly, this is a really good setup right now for dealing some crazy good damage. So I'm definitely inclined to stick with what we've got right now. Morbid Heart's kind of nice as well. Didn't expect a Planetarium, I've got to say. Jupiter is obviously trash. But we've got good speed, so I don't mind it. And it kind of fits with our poison-themed build here. But yeah, right now we're going to stick with this build, because uh, the D4 has rewarded us with something quite sweet. I like the knockback uh, item, the Maria's Trophy. Plus um, the the molten slag fires, I think they pair together quite interestingly. Like the fact that the fires can like knock enemies back as it goes, it's kind of funny. Ah, I didn't lose the zealot heart quite yet though. Um, if we go back and get this half soul heart, I believe it'll refill the zealot heart. Yes, it does indeed. It's quite nice that those hearts are um, able to survive one hit. It's quite generous, actually, considering how powerful they are. Oh, dude, the amount of fire it spawns is awesome. I think that's partially because of B skin, though, that it's spawning so many fires. Because um, I think the fires basically are like based on the amount of shots that are coming out. And with um, with B skin, we're firing so much additional shots when we shoot. Boss rush is plausible. I think we've already done boss rush, so we'll see if that's necessary based on the items available. Basically, if there's a good reflected item, I will I will go for it. I'm almost certain I'm in time for it. There you go, I am indeed. Um, and we are going light path here. So there is a reflected item. Um, unfortunately, it's not a great one, but we do have a little dumpy here, so I'll take that. We have done Bosch already, but I still think this is going to be fun, even though we might lose our Zealot Heart. I still think... I Clear damage means that we're going to be not too hard fought for killing these bosses in a timely manner. Not a big fan of the knockback when it zooms a boss off of the screen. Ah, uh, we lost our B-skin, so we might end up doing less fires now. Really? You can be kingpin straight away. It's a sort of dirty deed you're going to pull on me. Kingpin off the bat. Yeah, look at that. It's, it's basically a two-shot kill on bosses at the minute. There you go. We did lose our Zealot Heart. I kind of knew that was coming. It's fine. I realized I could have kept it, but Little Dumpy, I think over the course of a run, could save us quite a few hits. Of course, I could try and re-roll this run a few times while we do Bosch Rush and try and pull something out the bag and get something crazy going on. But more often than not, I think we're going to find that we get a much, much worse run than this. That pin we got under there as well. Yes, it is. Good. Blastoise. 
take him out. I think we're about halfway through so far. Like I said, when we're two-shotting most bosses, or pretty much two-shotting at least, it's not going to take us too long. One like big bit of power we've got to remember that we're losing here is obviously Toxic Shock. Oh, there's a Soul Heart that I didn't see. I think I picked it up and instantly walked into a fire, so not the not the most ideal way. Did I just take creep damage there? I can't have done it. I'm flying, right? The hell hit me? Maybe it was one of the eyes. It's okay. The damage we lose here, I'm not too precious about. The knockback is actually slightly inconvenient when I'm up close and personal with an enemy. I, I do have to say I keep walking directly into enemies, and it's not burning well for me. Look at that, that's way too much knockback. It's because the lower the enemy's health is, the more knockback we deal. So as, as we get the enemy down to low HP, it's kind of hard to keep them close. Give me that dumpy. Oh, bugger, I didn't see that happening. Dumpy, what are you doing? I thought you meant to block shots. <laughs> Seems to be making the lowest amount of effort to block these shots coming in. I wish you could destroy those fires. The, 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 those fires from Fiendfolio are actually a really massive pain in the ass. Not liking the fight we have going on with this guy right now. This is a, like a pretty gross wave. And there's this guy here as well. Being a dick. Right, last two waves I think. Two more to go. Calm down you. Oh! I didn't even mean to kill the other guy, he just died. Yeah, the knockback on, on smaller bosses is a little infuriating. But it's, it's making us do more damage though, so I'm not going to fault it too much. A lot of damage has been taken in this boss rush. <laughs> Maybe shouldn't have done this for a uh, little dumpy. I just, I love him so much. Oh, Steven's getting a rework soon, by the way. The, the mod that reworks bosses has already reworked him a little bit, but they're going for another pass. And he's... Becoming more of a little mini-game sort of style boss, it's kind of interesting. Um, I watched a video of the full boss fight the other day. It's looking pretty interesting. Also, I uh, I messaged um, Huts the other day and basically said, for one, go and check out the new uh, character um, in Enter the Gungeon, the new, new modded character that has its own past, but also check out the um, reworked furs and bosses mod, because he hasn't, he hasn't done a video on that yet, and I think that'd be right up his alley and pr pretty good for a video, so... He said he had heard of it before, but like sort of hadn't looked at it since the updates, and it's gotten a lot of updates. Really? You're gonna give me that? I'm really, really tempted to gamble on the um, on the re-rolling now. Like this run still slaps on the room clears, but that was a little rougher than I expected, and I think we can do better. <clears throat> In this scenario, the pretty pretty darn good. Like, we could get so much worse. We could get so much worse. I'm sure to do it. Why not? It's fun. Dude, I lost so much health doing that. And now I have soy milk. Oh, this is awful. Why did I lose so much health? I guess I'll take the dime. Yeah, not, not 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 particularly happy with that. And I got the quarter as well, which doesn't even give me any money. And even if it did, the money's not useful. Oh, dude, this is infuriating how long this is taking. 
You're a really, really pissing annoying enemy, you know that. Dude, you can't be serious. Don't even dare. No. <laughs> I'm not doing those enemies again. Remove them from the game, good sir. The only decent thing to do. This 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 room's gonna get me killed, isn't it? Oh my god. One more for a reroll. I knew I knew it was gonna be a bad idea to reroll, but I had to. Oh dude, I've lost so much health. This soy milk's so bad, my damage. She sucks. Right, we're we going on now. I I actually think that it is heinous, heinous, that if you get Hemolacria as Azazel, it doesn't give you Brimstone Hemolacria. Like, get at least, at, at least give me short range Brimstone Hemolacria, where the Brims that come out of the Hemolacria ball are like really, really short ranges. But don't just completely negate, don't just, don't you dare just completely negate Hemolacria's Brimstone completely, that's just awful. That's not, it's not fair at all. I will say as well, like, what has happened to my HP? And also, goddamn, Neptunus with this, with Hemolacria? Boy. Boy, is this kind of saucy. Doing some real good stuff. Like, goddamn, a fire rate's crazy. Just, just walk right into that, why don't I? Dive on in. Okay, so I've I've kind of ruined this run. I think from the from boss rush onwards, we I kind of choked it. Wait, 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 wait. Where the fuck's my D4? <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. Did I get re-rolled out of my D4? Did I re-roll the D4 with my D4? Is that even possible? I've never seen that happen before. What? what what the hell? I am very, very confused by this. That most certainly should not be possible. Anger and confusion befall me. I was like, okay, don't worry. Only a few more rooms and we can re-roll again. Not that this, not that this re-roll's bad, but I, just it sucks to get Hemolacria and it just completely removes the brimstone aspect of this character. I really don't like, um, I don't really don't like items or situations that completely remove a character's gimmick. It's one of the main reasons I have such trouble with, uh, with good old Burn Boy, the Forgotten, as, as all of you have seen in my videos. I just refuse to play him by just using the soul or using the soul a ton, because it's just, it just removes the main gimmick of the character using the, the, the melee. I don't want to use the soul guy, it's boring. Yeah, it's like, don't remove my brimstone, that's evil. Dude, I forgot that those pop into enemies. My bad. Also, yeah, dude, our reflected look right now is not great. We've not been getting that many reflected things that actually matter. I just want some reflected red hearts. There's where the true treasure is. Don't care about you, bomb. Dude, a single red heart from one of these chests, please. Oh, a reflected penny now that I accidentally walked into and lost my morbid heart. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, baby. Now that one streak we had? Say goodbye. <laughs> I died. God damn it. Oh, it is what it is. I hope you guys did enjoy. This was an intriguing episode, to say the least. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.